so to give you guys a little update of what's going on in the garden. Okay, so I wanted to show you this. Um, I harvested the zucchinis a few days ago. And then on a few of the plants, I cut them back. I cut them way back. And I did this on purpose because in this particular section, these zucchinis were getting really long and really uh, wild. They were being knocked over by things. A lawnmower had kind of hit them a few times. So I wanted to cut them back and promote new growth. Also by removing all the zucchinis and all the flowers, um, it forces the plant to go, <gasps> you know, it's only August and it definitely wants to keep going. So by cutting it back, the plant says, uh oh, let's do it again. So it starts producing new leaves and then it produces flowers and then it starts producing zucchinis. So this is what it looks like. Over here, I didn't harvest any zucchinis from these plants. Um, I didn't take any zucchinis off these plants because these plants I actually planted out um, a few weeks later than the rest of the plants in the garden. So uh, it's, it's behind on schedule, which is perfect because it means I still have fresh zucchini plants that have never had anything at all. So this will be coming out and I expect something to be growing on here sometime. Okay, one over there has already got a little one. So probably um, late August, early September, we'll have a few more and there's three more here, which is just beautiful, aren't they? These little guys. There's another one over here. He's sitting on some succulents underneath and this is some thyme. So we've had some pretty intense storms. Um, my sunflowers seem to be bouncing back quite well. They are definitely like, you know, falling over a little bit, but with a little bit of help with staking and stuff, they're not too bad. Because we've had so much rain lately, the ground is getting really dense and waterlogged, and that is horrible. So what that means is as the ground gets more and more waterlogged, tomatoes will continue to suck water up and then my tomatoes are going to split and this is <gasps> this is horrible because of course they split and then they start rotting and it's just not the same and they get too wet and they kind of lose their taste what i want is for the rain to stop <laughs> now it's great for other things but it's certainly not good for my tomatoes i had to prop this one back up yesterday uh the dahlias are doing the dahlias are falling over as well so I need to do some deadheading, definitely. Um, these are dahlias. Somebody had asked me what, what was the flower that was um, in one of the videos last year where I did the harvesting of the potatoes. They're dahlias. If you see these big beautiful things in the garden, they're all gonna be dahlias. They come in a whole variety of different um, shapes and styles. These ones look like, like little bent over cup kind of shapes and other ones are little curled uh, pebbles. Um, they're just, they're really, really pretty. So the dahlias are a plant I definitely recommend. Now they're a little difficult to work with because uh, you're going to have to dig them out um, in the fall and replant them again in the summer, which can be a little tedious. But if you're an avid gardener and you just love being outside, then that's not a problem, right? Um, but they're really amazing. They start blooming around June and here in northern Germany, we're in zone 7, they go all the way until about November or at least till our first frost, which here is pretty much in November, so it's really good. Um, now in this garden I've only got pink ones and white ones and that was on purpose because this year I wanted a really pink and white feel. I find that the white is really beautiful um, in the evening and then going into the fall where everything is more uh, dark and dimmer and you have a lot more dusk time. The white ones really glow in the moonlight and the pink ones are just beautiful. Whereas the darker ones, the red ones or the purple ones, they're not going to glow. They're almost gonna blend into the background and disappear. So I like to, you know, this year I just went with those color palettes. So something else that I've been doing is covering my seedlings. Now my seedlings mostly are growing outside. I have a few inside in the grow room, but mostly I like to keep them outside, but they're taking so long because there's too much rain and it's really too cold. So what I've done is I've covered them up with a grow cloth and this is just, um, it's kind of the same fabric that you'd find on like the underside of furniture. It's like a really, really thin, thin, see-through, fabric-y stuff. It's probably got a word I'll figure it out. You know what, you guys tell me. What is it called? I call it grow cloth. Um, but it actually keeps the plants a little warmer on the inside, so it's really good to just insulate that tiny little bit. And I've got that throughout the garden. I also use it if you have like a hoop bed, uh, which I don't recommend using PVC. I would recommend using something like um, wood that you've got bent over, so long stick sticks. So here behind me, um, I've got my winter bed, and this is where I put some potatoes and um, some of the watermelons. 
that I planted in a video a few days ago. So what I want to do is be able to raise the temperature in here just a little bit because they're very small seedlings and keep them going. So later I'm going to have to create something like a, a cold frame or a lean-to. I'm not sure. I'm thinking about different options. Ideally a little greenhouse would be awesome. <laughs> Of course, I keep telling my husband, okay, I'd like this and this and this, and he goes, what? You want, huh? Okay, huh? Really? How? Hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of messing with his head on that one. And then, of course, he says, well, I'm going to work, so you do whatever you want. Thanks, dear. So coming up, I'll show you guys how I'm protecting my winter garden uh, with my grow cloth and how I'm able to heat it up and then grow um, my seedlings in there. And you know what? I'm going to go over there and show you some of my squash too. Let's check those out as well. Okay, so the, um, the pumpkins are doing beautifully. I'm waiting for a day when Bo is off work because he's off at the studio again. Um, most days he's at the studio. I'm waiting for a day that he's at home with me and we can um, harvest the pumpkins. It helps because of course he can do the camera work and it's easier for me. And then I can show you, I think I have 11 pumpkins. I'm not sure. I think maybe one or two have died now because they were too small, but I really need to get them off because I want the plant to produce more and to, um, yeah to produce more, which is not going to produce more if I've still got the old ones on there. So I think that about does it for our update. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow. Toodaloo.